Hello there, and welcome to episode 2 of my tutorial series for NSS. In today's episode, we are going to get deeper into the base building aspect of the game. I know at the end of the last episode I said something about boss hunting, but in all honesty, I figured that I want to go for the base builders aspect first. You could, by all means, go for the boss hunting first. There's the game is a sandbox game, so which path you take is really literally up to you. But for today, I figured that the um, buildings and all those things are probably the next thing that I want to talk about. And then we have a nice and healthy prep up time for facing that boss. So I have prepared a few materials here, some stone walls, a stone door, some raw stone. And I also prepped up a carpenter's workbench, you know? This is a place where you can make fancy things, like lamps and wall torches and all those uh, pretty, pretty thingies. So you also can create beds there, and that's uh, the really, really important part, because beds are required to expand our little settlement. We also will require a pair of shears at this point, because, you know, it's just uh, really, really cool to have wool at this point, because no wool, no beds. I also pilfered an alchemy table in the dungeons down there. Feel free to do so as well if you feel fit to. And beyond that, there's just a few more things from the adventures that we have to sort out. Pay attention to the fact that you can just stand here and quick stack to nearby inventories. And uh, by pressing this, I will sort everything that is in my inventory and in one chest will be stacked together. Really, really cool stuff because in the long run, you will, you will really, really be grateful for all the automation that you can not get because this game has a lot of clutter, especially when it comes down to the potions. But, you know, we're all going to get there. Don't worry. So let's place down some building materials. We got that door, we got that wall, and luckily I got one bed. But uh, if you have no um, bed on your own, and uh, if you still require wool, just uh, go chase some sheep. Usually they are they are somewhere around your here, around your base. There's always some. So there's one traveling merchant here. Let's see what he has in store for us. So the brain on a stick. That's something I want to definitely buy. It's a uh, summonable uh, creature for us. We can import creatures here. Some. Uh, decorational items but uh yeah ropes that's something that i want to buy as well because you can't get these only from the merchant and the potion pouch because you know the potion pouch just makes your life so much easier it um you know it stores potions just like the name implies and uh therefore the earlier you can get one the better for your inventory space and these Dudes, they, they come to your settlement every now and then, and uh, judging from my own experience, they always seem to have the same items in their stockpiles, but I don't know. The newest versions I haven't played that much, so sometimes I might propagate some old knowledge. Correct me where I stand wrong in the comment section, be my guest. Right on. So let's get this done here. So with the potion pouch, we can now finally slap down all those nasty little things into the into the pouch. And the best part about it is the pouch will henceforth store these things for us as well. It's just a little bit um, clunky to, to stack everything into the pouch for the first time. But now we can use the same uh, methods that we had before. If ever there's something where it shouldn't be, we can stack it into the into the thingy here. So that's good for my uh, for my for my messy side. Let's get back to that. So I want to create some flooring because that was one thing that I lacked, but the night interrupted me. We're also going to set up some. I know, I saw that I had broken iron tools. Those broken tools, they are really, really useful. They are a good source for minerals or metals, even if you have mined out everything in a certain area. It's pretty cool. Now then, oh man, I keep forgetting that I want to craft that uh, stuff there. So, workstation, here goes. There's several versions of stone uh, floor. So we have some... Uh, variety in terms of uh, how it should look 
And if you hold down shift while left clicking, you're uh, crafting an entire stack here. It's uh, quite useful stuff if you want to create more at once. Okay, so now let's get on to the building side. Here, of course, that's uh, totally um, the domain of your own imagination. I'm going to go for something really, really uninspired here because, you know, this is a uh, tutorial series. I want to get things done in time. So all I'm going to do here is to create some simple sleeping areas for the first people to come so we can uh, can get in our, our first settlers because I bet that you guys want to see how that works. So I have forgotten a second door, but uh, here you go. That's a room. That's done. And uh, if you have placed down the carpenter's bench, you have, of course, access to way more items. Um, if you uncheck mark here, so you see, you can create lots of different things by using different woods. I am not going too thoroughly into these um, fancy parts, but I just want to showcase that they are here. So, um, uh, where was this here? Crafting guide. The carpenter's bench is made out of logs and iron bars at the workstation, just so you know. Right, so I was lacking a door because, you know, doors are just good. But uh, since I have only one bed and I'm preparing something for two, let's get over here. Ready the shears and just right click that thing. Boom. You need 10 wool though per bed. So this is uh, probably already a good reason to start considering some, uh, you know, more organized uh, approach to that thing. The first few of these, you know, it's uh, it's okay to to do that, but uh, let's show you those items. Sometimes I really have trouble discerning the icons. I hope I hope I'm not the only one. Where was that bed? Here. So one bed costs you oak logs or well whatever logs you have, ten of them, and ten wool. So. It is, um, there's more than enough uh, sheep around at your starting base, but you already might notice that, you know, it is quite cool to to help yourself a little bit. So we got that. And now the next thing that I want to do is we're going to complete those rooms. And then we're going to make sure that we find some people to live there actually. By the way, there's, uh, there speaks nothing against uh, shearing every sheep that you come across because, you know, wool is always a nice asset to have. So here we go. And uh, now to that flooring because I personally feel like unfloored buildings are just uncool. Yeah, very, very minimalistic setup, I admit. But uh, here uh, we're talking about the the basics. So I ran out of tiled floor. There we go. That's uh, up to your imagination, of course, how how uh, illustrious you want to set up your encampment. There is no limit in most resources in the game. So fetching up enough resource for whatever um, insane plan you got should be not that much of a big deal because you know trees are regrowing the underground is virtually endless you know while there is an end to what you have below your home tile every single island around you on the world map has a subterranean area comparable to this one and guess what it has also resources so there is really, everything is in abundance in this game, except for the things that have a high at base rarity. But uh, when it comes down to stuff like stone and logs and, and whatnot, don't, don't, don't think that there is any necess necessity to uh, get stingy here. No, no. So with some wood in the pocket, this all looks a lot different. Here we have also the ability to craft chests, very important stuff you'll go crazy without. Because, as I said before, the game's relatively cluttery. Therefore, it's really, really important to get yourself some sort of um, organization system together. Otherwise, you'll go nuts. But um, that being said, let's place down those beds. So, I have nobody that I can invite to this place. So, we're going to take our first boat trip. 
So when you're checking out the world map around you, there's uh, stuff and usually there is a uh, village around. If there is no village around, there is uh, also the possibility to use maps uh, there here. So local village map and a local dungeon map. You always spawn with, the, with these. So the way you use them, you just place them into the inventory hotbar um, and then you just left click it and uh, then you get a new tile revealed. Here it just shows the one that I already got. I don't know why, but uh, not necessarily showing something new. But uh, what's important to note is that this saves you from not having anything in your vicinity. But uh, whatever. If we want to get to this uh, place, we need to leave the map now either in this direction or that direction. The game is quite uh, accurate with that. So if we want to travel northeast, we have to leave the map on either the northern or eastern side. Otherwise, it won't work. If you want to bring, get new people into town, bring some coin. I'm not sure if I still have enough or if I went to for some too intense and hardcore shopping, we're going to see. So uh, press F to get yourself that boat under your feet that you hopefully have. If not, you can craft one quite easily with some logs and off to the east we sail. As you see here now, the game is uh, giving you that little bit of a cone. So in villages, you will always find people that you can hire and probably don't don't be as dumb as me and uh, don't travel during the night it's uh, actually way smarter to to travel during the daytime because you know there there is no time passing between uh, you leaving a, a a place and entering a place so uh in a nutshell we're uh, we're getting in here now in the total darkness and uh there's zombies but don't you worry too much where there's a city, there's light. And where they, where there's a city, there's also people. And where there's people, there's guards. And guards are insane. They just one shot those fellas. So, at a city, well, it's pretty lame in all honesty. You could basically just pilfer everything you need from a city. You can also live here if you want to. It's up to you. Like I said, sandbox game. Every person here has a job, a profession and can be asked to join your settlement. In, depending on what job they got here, you see the alchemist wants me to gather some alchemy stuff, and um, it always depends on their job. And you can always get their services in your own settlement if you recruit them. Somebody like a villager though is usually less costly, only uh, wants some wool here in addition to the coins. Sadly, I don't have that wool right now, but uh, the in a nutshell, the more skill a settler has, the more costly he'll be. And here you can always ask what kind of jobs they can do. So basically they are also limited in, uh, in their job selection. So let's, uh, let's just uh, go to sleep in a, uh, in, a, in a foreign bed because it's the best you can do. And it's always safer to be uh, not in the night time unless you like killing zombies for whatever reason that is. They have loot after all. So, here we go. That fisherman here would join us for some fish he would be able to fish you see this is uh, this is the same th this logic will be applied to every job in the game so if you want to uh, have somebody doing certain jobs in your settlement check out what kind of job they got so here the hunter is uh, good at hunting it was with a name doesn't it so <laughs> there's only a couple of people that you cannot hire and that's usually guards, if I remember correctly. Let me check. Ah, now they join too. And if I remember correctly, in past versions, they they were not capable of joining your city, but uh, now they can. So as you see here, a guard is not capable of working at all. They are, just like the name implies, guarding your city. They have a lot of HP compared to another person. And therefore, if you want to have fighters, there you go. So just like the sandbox game, uh, it's like the sandbox nature of the game would imply, it's totally up to you um, how you will take that, which person you will take, 
and how 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 hardcore you want to abuse the wealth of the uh, surrounding cities. In this game, it's really important that you make yourself your your story, you know, especially with the building part, because it's very very easy to live in uh, total abundance here. Here's even a gunsmith, so we can't even have uh, guns, and uh, this guy is. Providing the same jobs, but if I remember correctly, correct me if I stand wrong here, I don't know if I'm 100% uh, right here. I think the gunsmith will keep his ability to sell the stuff in your settlement, but here I need some proofing from the community because I can't remember anymore. <laughs> Alright, so like I said, you could uh, literally steal everything here from the from the village, but we're, we didn't come to steal here. The only thing that we're going to steal is one villager. So here we're going to ask her to join and now this one wants leather. Here's the one with wool, I got that. And now she's going to join our ranks at the forest settlement. It's also worth noticing that at a village you always have a uh, dungeon entrance. But speaking about a dungeon entrance, you can't have a dungeon entrance wherever you want. You can craft one for your pocket and uh, Ah, well, let's show it. The most amusing part about it is you can place it down wherever you want to, just like uh, this, and then use it. And then your uh, this is your access to the subterrain. And to make matters truly hilarious, um, you just uh, go on over there and uh, whoopsie, I am. I didn't mean to place a bomb. Ah, uh, fun. Yeah, well, I'm going to return uh, to this uh, place in a hot minute, and uh, I just want to grab my stuff, and then we're going to talk about villagers. Where were we? Yeah, that ladder. It's, uh, you can mine it and pick it up, yeah. So, I guess you figured that already, but I just wanted to get back to the uh, place of the crime. So, what did I mean to say with that? Well, you can totally decide for yourself where you want to enter a dungeon and you can even pick up that entrance again and replace it uh, somewhere else. So Nessess really does its best to uh, give you the ability to play your map the way you want it to. So uh, you you totally should get, get the gist by now. So we're back to, uh, to our home island with the new villager um, incoming. So we're going to go now over the village configuration things, at least some some rough basics, so you can already see how things will work. So let's get back to the place. So everybody in your settlement, that's the first thing I want to say, is uh, basically working very, very comparable to your own character. They need food, they um, need items to wear. So basically you're not only equipping your own dude, you're also equipping your own settlement. So all these fellas that you get into your town will also have some gear. So at the flag that you have, if you right click that, you get all that, all those beautiful little things. So here you can set up how this place should be named. Here we can see all the settlers. So here's some information about their happiness. But most importantly, we can now assign them uh, to to a bed so oh, ah they uh, they already picked up one wonderful so as you see here phil the elder has his bed here and uh, henry the villager has his bed here so that's already um, all set wonderful so as you see here there's not only the ability to have one settlement but several and uh, here would be able to reassign a bed if you want to have him assigned to a different one or you can even lock a bed from settlers so this is mine this is uh, probably a pretty useful um, setting to have at least one place where you can sleep because if you kick out your dudes out of the bed they can't sleep in that either so you should have a bed for everybody really important here in the equipment rider you see everybody spawns with a copper sword but they have an entire gear and they even come with a cosmetic set, so you can also configure how they should look like. Diet. So here, like I said, everybody needs food. You can allow or forbid certain types of food. If you don't do anything, they'll just grab whatever and uh, just, uh, just pick that up. So restricting. 
You can also tell them to not enter certain areas, but I'm going to talk about that once it's really important. Basically, you create an area here in this uh, menu and then you assign them to what uh, kind of uh, zone you want them to have. So in a nutshell, you can restrict their movement to a certain spot. But I'll explain that once I have a practical um, example, because I don't, I'm not a big fan of uh, just explaining too mechanical. So defense zone, as you see here with blue stuff, pretty important. And also you can just expand that as you see fit. In a natural way, it expands around buildings. And if you come from games like RimWorld, you will find that extremely easy and organic to understand. So I'm pressing escape here to uh, get out of the building menu because it's time to sleep. This time in my first own bed. So gearing up your people is one of the things that can be insanely fun because you can utilize pretty much everything you can utilize. So the quality of your uh, of your fighters and your forces is uh, totally up to you. All right, but um, that's of course not everything. So let's get back to the community center. So work priorities here. This is where, where things are truly interesting. So Henry can haul, he can craft, he can chop trees, and he can farm. These are the tasks that he can do. So we're going to have to assign some things here. But uh, first off, let's craft ourselves a chest and tell Henry to chop us some trees. Because that's one of the basic usages and it should illustrate how a lot of things here work quite decently. I hope not too much has been changed in the time being. So, ideally we would be setting up a forester's hut or something like that for the fluff, but I'll leave it up to you. For, for now we're just going to place down that chest. Alright, so let's get to that. And we're going to assign a forestry zone now. So settlers will chop down trees and replant them in forestry zones. So we're going to put this like that. Here we go. And this is so now going to be supposed to be the area where, where we want that to do. And you see, Henry already is at the job. Wonderful. So let's make sure that we also give Henry a place to slap things down. So we add that inventory to the uh, settlement storage. And now we want to have, let's see. Oh no, I need to call it logs. So in the um, initial setup, as you see here, everything is allowed. I personally would prefer now to reserve this thing here to logs and to, uh, saplings i think yeah so here everything related to these things is now allowed in that chest so and now henry does his thing we can watch him go of course we can also give henry um better gear that's also one thing but i don't know i don't know if if they how the thing is with them um, with the uh, with tools don't want to interfere his work right now it's quite wholesome. And uh, that's that's in a nutshell how you do things here. You assign them uh, the inventories. Let's see, at some point he should uh, stop what he's doing. And here you see he's already replanting things. All right, let's get back into the menu because I want to talk about one or two things while Henry is doing his thing. So if you see here, there's a couple of jobs, fertilizing, husbandry, fishing and hunting that Henry cannot do. So fertilizing is something you need a farmer for. I'm not quite sure. I think husbandry was also the farmer's job, but I need to check that out in more detail. Fishing, we already saw that angler. Hunting, we already saw that hunter. So in a nutshell, a base, th these four are the basic jobs that you can um, set up. And here we see even He's consuming stuff. And what I personally find extremely important to ensure, how to say it, the the simple flow of things at the very beginning of the game, I like to set up a couple of, of chests for the community that are unsorted. So let's see. I wonder when Henry will uh, 
drop his uh, gear, uh, drop his uh, stuff there. Just don't have enough uh, wood of one kind currently to create myself a new chest. So you can create pretty intricate and large systems with this. There you go. The configurations of the containers do um, determine a lot here. After the um, after you have given it uh, free to the settlement, you can always come back here to configure it. Also, there's priorities. So this one, I'll tell it to have a higher priority. This is now very important because now we're going to set up another chest. Let's do this one. Nah, probably not. This one is my personal stuff. After a new one quickly, or quite, uh, or just two of them because we are already that rich. And now around that uh, place here, let's do it like that. I'm going to place down these two chests, and uh, here I'm going to allow everything on them for now. So that's uh, quite useful to have. Because now whenever Henry is going to loot anything he doesn't know what to do, he's going to place it down here for, for now. So, Andrew wants to join us for 218 bucks. So as you see here, this way you can expand your village. You can also expel people. I personally am a big fan of um, bringing up talents that I want to use because the, the basic skills that every villager has, well, you can have them on pretty much every character, except for guards. They are really, really limited in their abilities. But beyond that, everybody can, be, um, can do the stuff a villager can do. In a nutshell, I am advocating that I find them the most useless among all the people that you can have. So let's quickly get over um, agriculture because that's uh, very, very easily done as well. So we need farmland for that. Farmland is made out of logs. Here we go. And uh, you place down farmland and farmland is the area where you can place down seeds and they'll grow. So that's uh, pretty much all that uh, all the basics about that and here it goes the same we just assign the workers and uh, let's see if they do it automatically if I just dump down the seeds I think it should be like that I'm not quite sure anymore. I think I need to re I need to look this up and I'll feature it at the beginning of the next episode in more detail. So the villager here to round it up, you can ask why they are feeling how they're feeling. So for example, here unhappiness because the room is completely dark. He's uh, not happy or unhappy about the size of the things. And uh, you see, there's a couple of things that you need to do to, to ensure some happiness. So locking them up in a hole like that sure does has its uh, drawbacks so here you can bring up the equipment so manage your equipment themselves by using settlement storage with that one you just need to slap in the items and uh, that's that and uh, well here you can also give them the priorities by talking with them but this is basically accessing the same menu you will have here Alrighty, so I'll leave it like that for today. I'll check out what uh, what was the matter with the farming. I somehow had a, had a different memory, but I played this game since several versions, and uh, every now and then there's uh, there's something which I thought it was like that, and it was a little bit different. Anywho, going to cover that in the, in the beginning of the next episode, and then we're going to talk about story progression a little bit more. I just wanted to have some people in the in the village before we get that done so i hope you found these basics quite helpful and uh, we're going to talk about more of the village features of course but there's only so and so much time in every episode so leave me your comments leave me a thumbs up i'd be really appreciating that and of course consider subscribing it'd be my pleasure so have a wonderful day and see you next time